I worked as a policeman in North Queen Street from 1950 to 1959. Things were different then than what they are today, very much different. It was a kind of entertainment crossroads of the city. There were movie theaters, there were several hotels because the train station was right here. Tearing down to make way for progress, the sign read. It was an ironic and tragic omen of things to come. After the dust settled, Lancaster City continued its decades-long decline beset by widespread blight and crime. So the idea was, how do we stop downtown from hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging retail, and how do we solidify the tax base? The sign heralding progress sat in front of a wrecking ball that smashed into the old Brunswick Hotel facade. It was one of many casualties of the city's classic architecture and its redevelopment policies of the 1960s and 1970s. If you've ever seen pictures of what was there before, uh, it'd make you sick, really. One of the things that we did not do in Lancaster that a number of cities did was to see older buildings as assets rather than liabilities. By the 1960s, the city's prized downtown business district was a toothless wreck. In its heyday, retail on the 100 block of North Queen Street brought in more than 20% of the city's property taxes. People in commerce fled cities for the suburbs, and the city government desperately searched for ways to bring money back to downtown. The solution proved to be worse than the problem. What the planners came up with was probably the worst solution imaginable. The late Austrian-born architect Victor Gruen believed the answer to the crisis was Lancaster Square. In 1966, local developer Second North Queen presented Grun's plan to transform the block into a public square modeled after the regional shopping malls that drained the city's vitality to start with. The Gruen plan for Lancaster Square uh, was an attempt to suburbanize downtown, and it didn't work and it probably never could have worked. It might have looked good on paper, but it just didn't work with people. It called for the raising of Lancaster's historic buildings, such as the Farmers National Bank. The ambitious project was doomed to failure at the outset. And, and it used a lot of concrete. For, <laughs> that was just the, the mode of the day. I'm glad to see it come down because it was a, it was a distraction and uh, served no good purpose. If you talk to architects during that time, that was how they were building things. Many say the decision to raise the block's unique buildings was a tragic loss. It was just a beautiful, quaint neighborhood. If we had it today, uh, downtown would be a far better place. Cities are very fragile human creations, and we need, when we introduce change, to be very conscious of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Ultimately, the Square Project failed to attract new businesses to the city. Uh, something for people to come downtown and sit there, and watch the pigeons, but there was nothing that was economically viable. It didn't work from the very time they started it. Retail had already started migrating to the suburbs, and it wasn't coming back. The square stood idle and unused for many years, but part of Victor Gruen's concrete monstrosity, as some call it, were taken down to give way to new developments on the west side, where Binns Park and the county offices at 150 North Queen Street are today. Now, after more than 40 years, the last vestiges of Lancaster Square are finally coming. What happens now? With the destruction of Lancaster City's North Queen mistake, the door is now open to make the block a bustling area once again. I think you have to have hope for the city. Maybe it'll just be a couple of restaurants in there. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see as we move along. It creates an opportunity. And the opportunity is to do something with the space. It's been sitting there, an eyesore, an underutilized resource for decades. This block has the real opportunity to link, uh, pr provide links between the core of downtown and around Central Market to the eclectic 300 block just up the street. It's a tough nut, I'll tell you. It's, it's tough. Well, I've kidded Rick Gray that we shouldn't be tearing this down, that we should, in fact, landmark it. And, and I mean it when I say I'm kidding him, but there is something to be said for this as a monumental failure. It did not work in terms of its intent of restoring Lancaster as a retail center and a vibrant retail center. Let it stand as a lesson for how never again to do something like that.